my name's Blake, and if you're new to my channel, I'm a hobby woodworker, and I build furniture and other small projects in my one-car garage. My last shop was pretty small, and I always imagined if we ever bought a house that it would probably have some massive garage or outbuilding so I could build a new shop. Well, that didn't happen. We were lucky to buy a house that did have a one-car garage, so I figured I'd make the most of it and build my dream shop anyway. This space started out as a typical, dark, super funky garage. I tore everything apart down to the bare studs and then upgraded the electrical, insulation, drywall, paint, flooring, and then I finally got to start moving in tools from my old shop. That was a couple years ago when I started my YouTube channel and posted my first shop tour video. But since then, I've changed a lot in here and I've even added a few things. If you check the description below, I've posted links for a lot of the things that you'll see in this video in case you're interested. All right, now for the tour. This is my shop. It's about 21 feet long, and just under 14 feet wide, minus the laundry area. This is the east end of my shop where I have mostly larger kind of workhorse machinery. It's also the dustier side of the shop where I'm doing milling and material breakdown. And because about half my tools are on casters, anything that I might want to take out into the driveway and use outside, I have them right next to the garage door. So I've got my table saw and router table combination, a planer on a flip cart with an oscillating spindle sander, my band saw, my miter saw, and a joiner down below. My table saw is an old DeWalt hybrid saw that I bought used. It's an awesome saw, but they discontinued this model a long time ago. I added the anchor table saw fence and built the extension wings on both sides. I modified a saw stop splitter and blade guard so it would fit my saw. And that gives me dust collection both below and above the blade. For dust collection, I use this Oneida Dust Up ED Cyclone, and it's connected to a shop vac under the back wing of my table saw. I control the shop vac with this remote switch, and I added a hook so I can attach it to my belt loop. I use this roller bearing outfeed support that folds up out of the way when I'm not using it. My table saw is on a rolling base, so I can bring it outside if I'm cutting large sheet goods or really messy stuff like MDF. I put the router table on the left extension wing of my table saw. I use an Inkra router lift and a big old Porter cable router. This is the router enclosure I built on the first video on my channel. If you asked me what my favorite tool was, I'd have to say it was my router table. And above the other table saw wing, I've got a big cabinet for storing jigs and other power tool accessories. I hung my Inkra Miter 5000 on the wall behind my table saw. I get a lot of questions about this thing. The answer to all of them is yes. Back in the corner, I have a flip cart with a planer and an oscillating spindle sander on it. The DeWalt 13 inch planer is a beast. And the rigid sander is great for refining curves. This Delta Milwaukee bandsaw is older than I am and better looking too. I've added several aftermarket upgrades, including a roller base so I can pull it out of the corner and use it in the center of the room, Carter guide bearings, and a homemade tensioning and detensioning system for quick blade changes. I also added this dust collection and made a video about it. This is my miter saw. The table is a built-in, and I used anchor track on both sides as a fence. The anchor stops let me do repeatable precision cuts. And I used a brass rod as an offset so I could position my stops accurately right up to the blade. I wired this switch to control a small dedicated shop vac that sits under the miter station. And these rubber flaps contain the dust that gets missed by the vacuum. Longer stock can go through the bandsaw and out the garage door to the left of the saw and I can cut up to 48 inches on the right hand side. My drill and driver set have all kinds of uses, so they have a spot right in the middle of the shop. 
I have this big metal drawer bin that I call my hardware store because it has everything I use on a regular basis and saves me a lot of trips to the big box store. Down below that is a charging station for all my cordless tools. When I designed my miter saw station, I made room for this large tool chest that gives me tons of storage. I also built my miter station a little taller than normal so I could fit this joiner underneath. This folding platform is great as an assembly table or for sanding or even as a workbench for my shop assistants. On the north side of the shop, I've got a drill press and a drum sander down below. Over here is what I consider my hand tool area, with the bench that I built, all of my western and eastern hand tools, a few bench top power tools, and lots of drawers below for storage. I have a vintage Rockwell drill press with a homemade table and fence. And of course, once again, I added inker hardware for hold downs and repeatable stop blocks. I added a removable zero clearance insert that could be turned several times before replacing it. Right above that, in the center of the shop, is my air hose reel. I use magnets all over the place in my shop. Mostly for the measuring tools that I have a tendency to set down and lose in the middle of a project. Under my drill press is a drum sander on a custom roller stand that I built specifically to fit that space. I made this surface sanding attachment for my drum sander and also made a video about it if you want to check it out. This is the shop heater New Air sent me. It's 220 and it blasts my small shop with hot air. New Air also sent me this fan to keep my California shop cool and to blow all the fine particles out the garage door. This is the compact workbench I built. The built-in drawers give me more storage and add weight to the bench. I hung a roll of masking paper right next to the bench so I could cover it during glue-ups or finishing. I use these Veritas brass bench dogs and I have an old craftsman vise that I restored and mounted on my bench. And on the wall is the cabinet that I built for my hand planes and western hand tools. Most of these are flea market finds or tools that I brought home while I worked at a used tool store in Santa Cruz in my 20s. They were all in pretty rough shape when I found them, but I've tuned up and sharpened every single one of them so they're ready to use. I built this simple tool holder that goes over my window that holds mostly my Japanese hand tools. This sign that I carved out of poplar, painted, and gold-leafed has become the centerpiece for all of my shop videos. Below that is another drawer unit for storage and some bench top tools. I've got an old bench vise, a WorkSharp 3000, a one-inch belt sander, and a vacuum press. Tunes are essential in the shop, so I've got an old school iPod Touch and some pretty decent computer speakers with a subwoofer dedicated to the purpose. But when I'm running loud machinery, these Howard Leet headphones keep me going. On the back side of my bench is a clamp rack with 30 F-style clamps that I've collected one by one over the years. And I'm still about one short. 
Next to that, I mounted this little draw bin that I found because it's the perfect size for the sanding circles for my random orbit sander. I've got the west end of the shop set up mostly for digital fabrication with the Shapeoko CNC and computer. I've got lots of cabinets for storage and lumber racks up above. But I also share this part of the garage with a 10 foot long section for laundry and house utilities and three hanging bicycles overhead. This is my buddy Blender, the CNC machine. I built this custom enclosure to keep him safe. And if you want to learn more, I made a video of that too. Bits and Bits Company keeps me covered with end mills for my CNC. I mounted a screen to the wall and connected it to an old laptop that I now use for design and controlling the CNC. Above the computer and CNC area, I have lumber racks for all my hardwood storage. I generally try not to keep more on hand than what fits on those racks. Below the CNC, I have a Fuji Minimite 4 HVLP for spraying finishes. All I have to do is pull out the spray gun and I control the power unit with another remote switch. Below my HVLP is a box that hides my air compressor. It's just a simple plywood cover that I've lined with styrofoam for sound insulation. And of course, the compressor is also controlled with another remote switch. I have a scroll saw that I don't use much, but it's actually great for the kids. The foot switch lets me keep both hands on the piece we're cutting. This end of the shop has higher ceilings, and I didn't want that vertical space going to waste. So I hung three bicycles from a pulley system that easily lets me drop them down for a beach cruise. I also hung my air filter and the big ass table saw sled I made in another video. On the back door, I've got a bulletin board and a dry erase board for inspiration. I also mounted a fire extinguisher and a first aid kit to impress my wife. The original concrete garage floor was super rough and soaked with oil stains. So I covered it with this heavy duty garage flooring, which not only looks great, but makes it really easy to clean. My shop lights are on two different banks, controlled by three-way switches on either side of the garage. And I just switched out the old fluorescent tubes with these super bright, daylight balanced, ultra efficient replacements sent to me by Hypericon. I gave each shop light its own switch so I could modify the lighting as needed for my videos. But a variety of hard light sources placed strategically around the room gives my videos more contrast, definition, and drama. This giant LED warehouse light can simulate soft window light or even create a dramatic silhouette and I can control it next to my camera with this remote. And that is the Weber Wood Shop. See you later. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I just wanted to make an announcement while I have you here and I'm pretty excited about it. For the first time ever, I've just launched a brand new website for my channel, theweberwoodshop.com. It's loaded with information about my shop and I was able to take all of the links for the products that I use and put them in one place. So they're organized by category, there's pictures for everything, it's super user friendly, and my hope is that it can be a really helpful resource for anybody putting together a wood shop. I even figured out how to do a 360 degree virtual tour of my shop. So you can look around, you can zoom in, it's really cool. So if nothing else, go check it out just to play around with that. But there's still so much more that I wanna to add to the site. So if you check it out and there's something that you think is missing, or if you have feedback of any kind, just let me know in the comments on this video and I'll keep improving it. Happy woodworking everybody and I'll see you later. A huge thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon for encouraging me to go out into the shop late at night after I put my kids to bed and create these videos. If you want to join the club, get access to my SketchUp files, stickers, and other merchandise, or see your name at the end of my videos, just find me on Patreon.